Now let us look at, uh, uh, you know, so we will look at the remaining questions maybe later uh, or you can work out this details when we learn more uh, sophisticated techniques. So here we look at uh, an introduction to graph coloring. So graph coloring is a very, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, very useful subject. There are many, 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 uh, it's, it's one of the major areas in, uh, in, in graph theory. Topics, okay? So, because there are so many different versions of coloring and each coloring can represent many different uh, problems from uh, uh, real life. Right? So, there are, there are so many kind of questions that arises, uh, which can all be converted to uh, graph coloring questions. So, therefore, this has become a huge area. In fact, a major part of graph theory is now graph coloring. So I did my PhD in graph coloring, uh, for example, uh, during my PhD time. And uh, there are many other uh, uh, related uh, coloring notions. We will uh, look at one uh, for the time being, and maybe later we will look at another related notion. But there are there are dozens or even in fact hundreds of uh, you know uh, coloring notions itself. And then you know you can you can add many many constraints to the question that we ask. So here is the uh, general idea of uh, coloring. So coloring is basically a fancy name for, uh, uh, you know, uh, partitioning or uh, right uh, of the vertex set. Like so, given uh, given a simple graph G and uh, let's say set C, a coloring of G using the set C is a function from uh, B to C. Okay, so that is all uh, a coloring. Now. <laughs> A coloring uh, is so most of the time when we use we are going to use this so a coloring is called a proper coloring okay so a coloring uh, f is called a proper coloring if it gives uh, different colors to adjacent vertices okay so if, if u and v are adjacent in the graph then uh, f of u must be different from f of p right in that case the coloring is proper otherwise the coloring is not proper so even if it is not proper there are you know there are applications for that but most questions will uh, look at proper color. So we will see many, many versions of proper coloring we, we will look at. So uh, basically, uh, vertex coloring is what we uh, immediately, when we say graph coloring, it is the first thing uh, is uh, vertex color. Right? There are other notions of coloring, edge coloring, and uh, you know, phase coloring, there are many things we can do. And uh, uh, these all depend uh, on the cases, but when we say coloring, it is usually vertex coloring. And uh, most of the time, we will uh, just write coloring to say that proper coloring of the vertices, where the adjacent vertices get uh, different colors. Now, uh, if we are using uh, a coloring which is not proper, we will mention it that way. So, if I just say uh, coloring without uh, mentioning anywhere that we are not looking at uh, proper coloring it is assumed to be proper color okay this is the convention that we make so here are some examples so we have a graph g uh, with uh, some coloring here so let's say the set c is r g b and k right. i am going to color using these uh, four possible colors red green blue and black right so uh, what are the colorings possible like let's say uh, here is a proper coloring of g using uh, the colors in c where I color the central vertex with B, right? Then, uh, then uh, these uh, vertices cannot be colored B because I am looking at proper coloring. So this must be different from B. It has to be let's say G. This must be different from B and G because they are adjacent to each other. So therefore, this is uh, all uh, different three colors. But on the other hand, I can use G again here because uh, these are not adjacent. So I, I use the same uh, three colors to color all the vertices. So I don't even use the black color, right? So with just three colors, I colored the entire vertices. It is a proper coloring. It uses only color from C. So therefore, it is a C coloring of G, right? Proper C coloring of G. Now here is another uh, proper C coloring uh, of G, right? So I, I use the color uh, black also. So K is used in the middle in this case. And then I use R and B here. I can either use R and B or G and R here, B and G here, whatever I please. So I get another proper coloring. 
Here is another C coloring, but which is not proper, right? So I use color B here. I use B and G here, and I use G and K here. But now I use R and R here, but R and R are adjacent. Therefore, it is not a proper coloring, but it is a C color. So we have uh, you know, this kind of all kind of colorings we can do. We can see which are the ones which are proper. And then we can ask, can we count the number of proper colorings? We can ask, what is the minimum number of colors that will give you a proper coloring? So these are the interesting questions uh, we will look at uh, in graph uh, coloring. So again, as I mentioned before, unless stated otherwise, when I write coloring, it is proper. Now, the the smallest integer, right? Uh, you know that is a cardinality of a set C, such that uh, such that uh, the graph G admits a proper uh, C coloring. Is called a chromatic number of uh, the graph G, it is denoted by chi of G. So the chromatic number is the smallest number uh, of colors that will allow a proper color. Right? For example, uh, let us say that I, I take this graph. Okay. Or uh, uh, maybe, maybe this graph. Okay. Now, what is the num minimum number of colors that uh, will allow to color this graph? Okay. Suppose, suppose I, uh, how do I argue this, right? Suppose I start with uh, like, uh, you know, uh, color 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So that I can use the minimum number. So I start with the color 1. Okay. So I color this vertex with 1. Now, I know that because I colored this with 1, I cannot use color uh, uh, 1 here, right? So it must be different from one. So therefore, I can give this two. Right. Now there is a question whether I want to uh, use uh, color two here or uh, I want to use a new color here. I don't know which is the best. But for the time being, I will say that okay, uh, I can reuse the color because I want to minimize. Right. So let me say that I am only using. Uh, two colors. So then, in that case, I have to use two here right? because I cannot use one. So I can safely assume that I am using color two here. Now, since uh, you know I have used color one here and color two here, I cannot use color two here. I am using only two colors. I have to use one more. I mean, you know, I have to use the color one here because I cannot use uh, color two. Now, because this is one and this is two, right? So because this is 2, well, here it is 1 and this is 2, I cannot use 2 here. So I have to use maybe 1, but I cannot use 1 here because I have already used 1 here. Right? So therefore, we know that we need to use at least one more color. So we need three colors to give a proper color. Right? So the uh, number 3 one can convince that is minimum required and because there is a coloring with three colors, uh, we see that it is a chromatic number of this graph. Right? So we showed that less than two is not possible. I mean, less than three is not possible, and three is possible. So therefore, that shows that there is a uh, coloring with three, and that is the smallest. So we get three to be the chromatic number of this graph. So uh, this question is like you know. Can we find uh, the minimum number that is required? Right? That is for a for an arbitrary graph that I give. Uh, one while we, we are not going to really discuss this, one can show that this question is not an easy question. And uh, in fact, if you want to uh, you know find the value algorithmically, then uh, it is uh, it is a question that is. Uh, uh, not known to have any polynomial, I mean, it's, uh, it's not known to have any polynomial time algorithm. So it is, it's, a, it's an NP uh, hard question, and uh, we still don't know whether we can uh, solve it in polynomial time. So it's, it's going to be a difficult uh, uh, question to actually find the uh, smallest number, right? To be the precise uh, number. For general graphs. Now, there could be, you know, there could be several graphs, classes of graphs where we can easily find it. That uh, we will uh, discuss in a, in a 
uh, usually in a graph theory course but in this case maybe we will not look uh, much uh, into it except we will look at some some bounds so what we are going to look at is can we say that what is the smallest number which is uh, you know it's necessary you know the largest number that you can say is necessary and the smallest number that will uh, suffice so we will get a lower bound and upper bound and then we will get to reduce the gap between these and see how much uh, close we can go uh, without spending too much uh, so this is uh, another interesting direct so there are uh, many questions one can come up with uh, and many other parameters but uh, yeah but uh, i just wanted to point out that like you know, finding a minimum uh, makes uh, sense we will see some examples of applications for this now uh, here is uh, here is a graph what is the chromatic number let's see uh, what is the smallest so can you find out what is the minimum number of colors required for this okay. so one thing that you can immediately say is that if the graph has at least one edge you need at least two colors right without uh, if there is an edge the endpoints must get different colors right so this, is, this is clear so therefore if the graph is a non empty graph then uh, we will we will need uh, uh, we will need uh, at least two uh, at least two okay. so now the question is that what is the minimum that Uh, will suffice right so in this case one can show that two is sufficient right so what i am going to do is that let me start with the uh, vertex here let's say color one or maybe i will use another okay color one now let me take another vertex right so let us say that i i take uh, the vertex which is neighboring this right neighboring this vertex this is going to get color 2 because i cannot give the same color but now i see that this neighbors of this two can all be given color 1 because there is no edge connecting so therefore this all i can give one now i can give color 2 to here and therefore i get a two color so because 2 is necessary we see that this is equal to 2 right the chromatic number of graph is equal to 2 and we may do should improve right okay now what about this graph right so the graph x what is the chromatic number well we can try uh, you know uh, using some method now let's say that i start with the uh, uh, color one here now i can i can color this with the uh, color 2 uh, right then uh, i know that i will need color 3 uh, here because i cannot use color 1 or 2 here and now here right here uh, i can use either uh, uh, i mean i can use only 2 because 1 and 3 are not possible so therefore i use color 2 and here i will use color 1 again right so i can do with color uh, three colors and since i can see that at least three is required right from this part because all these three are adjacent to each other so that for they have to give different colors to each of them, right? so therefore i will i will say that this requires at least three so this is equal to three now one of the observations that we made during this is that like if uh, two vertices are adjacent they must get different colors so if all the vertices are adjacent all of them must get different colors so chromatic number of the complete graph on n vertices must use at least n different colors right every vertex must use a different color so this is actually equal to n right so the chromatic number of the complete graph is the number of vertices so every vertex gets a different now here is an observation that we we actually observed in the previous examples that the chromatic number of a graph is at least the smallest complete subgraph which is sitting inside so if there is a complete graph sitting inside all of the vertices must get different colors and omega is the cardinality of the smallest uh, the largest complete graph uh, not smallest the largest complete graph sitting inside okay so omega is the 
largest complete graph uh, sitting inside. Uh, so omega of g is the cardinality or order of the uh, largest complete graph, right? Uh, complete subgraph. So uh, chromatic number is at least the uh, omega of g. Right? So this is the called the click number. So this kind of complete graph, which are subgraphs, are called clicks in a graph. So click. So the click number is uh, small omega of g. So, so the chromatic number is at least the click number. That is immediate because we know that all the vertices of the click must get different colors. So we get a, you know, immediately we got a lower bound, right? So we know that it must be at least omega of g or a lower bound for chromatic number. Now we can think about upper bounds. Can we say that, okay? Omega is always less than or equal to, I mean, uh, chi, uh, chi is always less than or equal to something, right? Then we say chi of g is less than or equal to something. Of course, the immediate thing that you can say is that it is less than or equal to the total number of vertices, right? But it is a useless bound because we know that it is, uh, it, you know, we cannot even give more colors anyway. Therefore, this is a trivial bound, which is not very uh, useful for us. So uh, now the question is that what can we uh, what can we say about uh, uh, a number which is different from n? Right? Can we say still uh, that uh, it is less than or equal to something? So maybe you think about this for a few minutes, right, and, and come up with a, a number. That then we can we can uh, we can go ahead, right? So let us look at uh, something. Okay. Now, uh, uh, before before uh, going into an upper bound, let us look at one application of color. So here are some uh, students uh, clubs, right? Student clubs, and uh, there are a number of them, and they want to plan uh, monthly meetings with you. Okay. So every month they have they are allotted uh, a weekend, right? On on Sunday, let's say. You can arrange your uh, meetings on this day. Now the problem is that, like, uh, if uh, if when a student belongs to two clubs, and if both clubs are meeting at the same time, right, then this uh, person cannot attend uh, both the uh, both the meetings. But of course, uh, you don't want to miss the club meeting, right? And therefore, uh, uh, what you can do, right? So you want to find out. The, we have to make sure that you know uh, when we when we assign the uh, you know or decide the uh, time schedules, we have to make sure that they don't intersect, right? So how many uh, different uh, uh, slots are required? Right? Now of course if every club has a different uh, slot, that will be required. But if the number of clubs is large, maybe we don't uh, want to spend too many uh, hours for this, right? You know maybe, maybe we have a uh, more than 10 clubs and then you know, maybe we'll find out that uh, you know, we don't want to spend 10 hours in a, in a Sunday uh, for this. So let us try to uh, see what is the smallest number possible. Okay. So can we do it less than the number of clubs? So of course, you know, uh, this is the question. Uh, we can uh, uh, design as a graph coloring question. So how do you design it as a graph coloring? So each each club, uh, let us say, becomes a, a vertex of the graph. Okay. So this is club one, then club two, club three, club four, etc. Right. So so we we write uh, you know uh, these clubs as vertices. Right. So we get uh, several of these uh, clubs and uh, the several of these vertices. Now. Each vertex, so now I have to define the graph, which means that I have to define the edges. So what are the definition of edges? So the edges are there between two clubs if the club share some member. Okay. So if uh, if the club 1 and club 2 have some common member, then I put an edge between. Okay. When if there is at least one member in common, I put an edge between. Then I, I define the graph like this, right? So whatever is 
uh, then i will say that okay these are the these are the uh, relations right so once i have this uh, graph i say that if i find the chromatic number of the graph that tells me the least number of slots that will uh, work for uh, doing this uh, uh, club uh, meeting schedule so how do you do that well let us say that uh, you know each uh, you know uh, each slot is given some numbers right one to k right is is slot is now a color right? numbers can be colors because our sets uh, elements of sets are colors right? so now what i am going to do is that i am going to color the vertices in a proper manner with the least number of colors possible right so therefore if i start coloring let's say one of this uh, clubs with color one right we not like this actually i want to find the minimum and this uh, procedure will not tell me the minimum but uh, no just to give you a flavor so let's say that you know uh, this vertex is given uh, color one then i know immediately that okay because c2 is adjacent to i mean uh, c3 c2 cannot get color one so it has to use a different slot let's say two right now c3 and c2 are adjacent to c4 so therefore c4 must not uh, because they have common members so therefore i need to find a different slot for c4 also right so this way uh, the coloring will give you uh, a schedule and if you find the minimum number of colors that will give you the minimum number of slots required for the uh, meeting schedule okay something if you think about a few minutes will be much more clear to you okay so yeah i think this is the same thing that i was mentioning so finding the chromatic number of the graph will tell you uh, will uh, help you to resolve this now here is an observation uh, about the upper bound so if g is a simple graph then the chromatic number of g is uh, at most the maximum degree of g plus 1 so given any graph g so the delta of g is the maximum degree right the, the degree of uh, vertices are there d1 to dn and then the maximum among the degrees is called the maximum degree delta this is something we uh, defined earlier so whatever is the maximum largest degree in the graph that plus 1 is an upper bound for the chromatic so can you see why okay. maybe you should think about this for a few minutes figure out why this is an upper bound okay so here is the here is the reason so i i know i just take the graph and then you know uh, start color okay so what i am going to do is that i pick a vertex whatever vertex i want which is not colored and try to give it a color now when i am going to uh, you know take this uh, this graph pick a vertex right and uh, then i am going to color this vertex with some color right so let us say that the degree of the vertex is uh, let us say d uh, d right so the vertex uh, is u and the degree is uh, d right now if the degree of the vertex is d i am going to pick i, I have already picked this vertex and i now i want to color with some color right so i want to associate some color to this vertex so what are the colors that i cannot give uh, to the vertex u right i cannot give a, a color to u only if that color is used in one of its neighbors right either here or here or here right so you look at all possible d neighbors each of them can use at most one color and uh, in total it can use at most d colors right so if i have more than d colors available in the set right in c if i have more than d colors then i can use one of the you know uh, colors other than the this d color right this could be less than d but at most d right so one of the colors other than this d will be available and that color i can use here so if i have at least d plus 1 colors in the set i can always color the vertex with degree d now this is true for any vertex right no matter what the uh, previous uh, vertices are colored with this vertex can always be colored with 
if i have at least at least uh, at least uh, d plus 1 collides away now delta is the largest such thing right the maximum so we are looking at maximum over all d right degree of i mean uh, yeah uh, all d of u right uh, i mean maximum over all u d of u right maximum over, over all u all the vertices d of u right that is uh, uh, delta and therefore d is going to be less than or equal to delta for every vertex right du is going to be less than or equal to delta so when when i am taking delta plus 1 colors right i have uh, uh, at least one color available even if i use all the delta and i get different colors so therefore i i see that uh, i can always color with uh, delta plus so the chromatic number is less than or equal to delta of the equation this is immediately clear <coughs> now once i once you have something like okay? so in graph uh, theory like you know the, the question that we come up with are like this. suppose you have inequality then the first uh, question you can ask is that when is the inequality actual inequality can it is it uh, ever uh, attained is it possible to get a graph where you actually need delta of the plus one right or uh, or uh, is it possible to do with uh, uh, you know less than uh, delta g plus 1 if the graph is let's say not uh, <coughs> uh, one of some specific graphs right or or in all cases so these kind of questions are interesting so <coughs> so what is this uh, uh, question that we ask immediately is that precisely uh, which cases uh, can attain this uh, bound as equality and then if the equality is not attained then what can you say about the other graphs right and what is the largest uh, bound then and things like that. so this is uh, solved by a very uh, famous theorem called brooks theorem okay so brooks theorem says that there are only two classes of graphs which require delta of g plus 1 okay so the first one is what is called uh, the odd uh, cycles it's odd length cycles are the cycle graphs where the number of vertices is odd okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so let us take an odd length cycle now the odd length cycle has uh, all the vertices have degree exactly 2 okay? so the maximum degree is also equal to Two, but it requires three colors because you know as we as we observed in the case of C five earlier, if I start with one color, then uh, I am forced to give uh, you know colors the uh, two to these two guys if I am using at most uh, at most two colors. Therefore, uh, consequently we have to use color one here and here, and then uh, I started with the yeah. Uh, color one here and here, and then uh, I have to use uh, color two here, right? But uh, here, also, but I cannot use color two here and here because they are adjacent. So I need to use a third color. So these were all forced. Then uh, we can say that this is the minimum. So for all cycles, we can immediately see that we need three colors, right? So what are the other graphs which request delta plus one? So it it turns out that the other graph. uh which require delta plus 1 are the complete graphs k okay so if the graph is complete we said that all the vertices must get different colors right so you take any complete graph we know that every vertex must get a, a different color because they are all adjacent but what is the degree the degree is the number of vertices minus 1 so the delta is actually n minus 1 but we need uh, n colors so that for it's actually equal to delta so when the graph is a complete graph kn or uh, it is a, an odd cycle c2n plus 1 we need uh, delta plus 1 colors okay so g not equal to uh, c2 k plus 1 uh, and uh, kn right then uh, uh, you know uh, the chromatic number of g is less than or equal to delta of g Right. We don't want a plus one. 
So this uh, is something which we, we need to prove. Okay, this is just a claim. This is called Brooks theorem, and I will give this you as an exercise to work. It takes a little bit of work, but uh, it will be very interesting. So yeah, so the question is that when is equality attained? When uh, is k, k of g is equal to delta g plus one? So equality is as we mentioned is when the graph is complete graph outside. Group. So what I want you to show is to prove the following proof theorem. If G is neither complete graph nor an odd cycle, then the chromatic number of G is at most delta O, which is the maximum degree. Okay. 